So we're going to start off uh, check writing by watching a video about how to write checks. They automatic debit and credit card to be accepted just about everywhere. You might not be so familiar with these things called checks, but anyway, we're going to teach you how to use them. Filling out a check is a pretty easy process, but still, we're going to walk you through it to make sure you know how to do it properly. The biggest thing to keep in mind is that you need a pen with either blue or black ink, like this one. Checks come in all different forms. You can get personalized checks, you can get different themes, as you can see, I have Ohio State checks. You're going to have a lot of personal information on it, being your name, sometimes your phone number, and your address. Also, the checks have numbers on the side in sequence to keep things in order so you can have a following receipt of where you're writing things and where they're going. Also at the bottom of the check is something that's very important even on doing online banking. You do have to set up your accounts and most oftentimes they're used through your checking account. The first number you're going to find is your routing number and then the second number that you're going to find is your account number. The first thing you're going to do is fill in the date with today's date. Did he spell September wrong? Yeah. <laughs> Next, write the business or the individual you're transferring money to to the page to the order of line. Next, write the amount that you're paying in decimal form to the box on the right. Then, in long form, write out the amount on the line below. The only tricky part to it is making sure that you Wait write and, it's not the same and then put the sweaty. fractional oh, yeah, it is. amount for cents in there. Oftentimes, you're not going to have an amount that covers this whole line, so at the end, it's always good to just cross out the rest. As you can see, you're not going to need to write the word dollars or cents as it's already listed here. The most important thing is to make sure these two lines are legible as it's the only thing that will be looked at when determining exactly how much money to be transferred. This area here is just for reference only. It's always good practice to fill in the memo line so that you can keep track of exactly what you're spending your money on. Finally, sign the check and it's good to go. For your record, it's always a good idea to record the payee, the amount, and the date in your check register. Nowadays, some checks like these have a carbon copy on the bottom that record the information for you. A couple things to remember. Blue or black ink, write legibly, and writing out the amount in long form is most important. Don't end up like this guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's poor English, Carla. <laughs> That's where I'm going for right now. Okay. I was like, I'm going to build my way to that. <laughs> you got a ways to go? <laughs> I'm working, I'm work, starting out with improper grammar, and I'm slowly building my way to misspelling and mispronouncing words. <laughs> or maybe you left that behind. You're beyond that now. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start off by writing some checks as a class. Numbers. I'll tell you who to write it to. Oh, me. <laughs> no. Yeah, so as you guys can see, these checks don't have any personal information on them, and the number is the same on all of them because it's the same check. <laughs> but for purposes of this test, it's fine. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is fill in the date. So you guys can go ahead and fill in the date on the date line. And we're going to be writing this check to Bowling Green State University. So when we're doing that, we call it BGSU, but what would be the proper way to fill in that line? Would you want to write BGSU on it? I did. Huh? I did. You did? <laughs> They're always I supposed to be the thing. Huh? I wrote the whole thing. Okay. So why is either way acceptable? There you go. So it's one and the same. I think Tammy's answer was bad. <laughs> <laughs> if it comes in the mail, I'll just You can put it. dear blanks 
but they'll still catch. Yes, that's true. All right. So then your check amount is going to be for $163.84. So go ahead and fill out every part that has to do with the cash. How much money you're paying. All right. <laughs> All right, and then what do we do at the end of filling out the written part of the money? Uh, and why do we put that line? Why are you whispering? To use all the space. To use all the space. All right. So nobody can add to it. Yes. So this B is going to be for the bursar payment. So where would that go? On the memo. And then the last thing you want to do is sign your check. Now, does anyone have any idea why you don't start by signing your check and then filling it in? Because if you lose it in the process, you're in trouble. Yes. Because if you sign a check first, someone can fill it out for however much they want. Just take it all. <laughs> Alright, so the next one you guys are going to do on your own. <coughs> so, it's obviously the same date because we're still working on today. So you're writing it to just any friend. For $1,678. And this is for rent for more than a month, obviously. NBG, anyways. Huh? Yes. Yeah, NBG. NBG. I'm not used to doing I'm that, not, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm not either. <laughs> but I have to write up checks for my mom's um, nursing home, and they're like 7,000, you know, 7,678. All right. So now that we've all finished, never to go. the one thing I want to point out is with this specific number, when you write it out, there's zero cents on it, right? Mm -hmm. So what are a few ways, other than just writing zero, that you guys think of that we can maybe use for that? Just a dash. No hundreds, if you had room. Like no over a hundred? Yeah. Yep. All right. I've seen XX over XX. 100. Yep, yeah. different ways. I always preferably think it's preferable to write no or the X's on it because then someone can't turn your zeros into something else. And even though it's only a little bit of change, maybe you only had exactly enough money in your account to pay for that. <clears throat> so then technically an extra... 80 cents or something is going to overdraw you. So that's my preferable way. You can use any of the ways that you've seen. So the next thing we're going to do is fill out our check register. Because anytime you write a check, you want to make sure that you are recording it and then keeping track of when that money actually comes out because this is going to let you know how much money is actually in your account. All right, so this is a blank one. So up at the very top of it, you see it says a little line that has like the dollar amount. It's like blank. It's right next to the word deposit. 
So that's where you put the initial amount of money that's in your account. So let's go ahead and assume that we have $5,000 in our account to start off with. So then for filling out our first check, you see under number, you want to go ahead and write the check number. And like I said, it's okay that they're the same number it's for the purposes of knowing. Write the date that the check it has. Transaction means writing who the check was written to. And this is a withdrawal. And then make sure to calculate. The way you keep track of the amount is you take your $5,000 and you subtract the amount of the first check so that you know how much money is in your account. And then go ahead and do the same for the second check. Okay, so as I walk around and you guys are finishing up, notice that some people are using two lines, some people are using one. It's all based on preference. Some people like to use the light and the dark line because maybe you write a little bit bigger or the name's longer, so it gives you more room to write. That's fine. No matter which way you choose to use your lines, skip a line, use two lines, use three lines, it doesn't matter as long as you're able to keep track of where your money is. So because these are checks, you would have just given them to someone, so your account is still going to say you have $5,000, when really, what should your total be? What was that called? $3,158.16. Do we all agree? Yes. yes. Right, so really, that's how much money is in your account to use. So now we're going to do a deposit. You're going to add a deposit to your check register. So someone wrote you a check, for, let's say I wrote you a check for $200. So how would you go about adding that in there? You can use today's date, I wrote, I wrote you the check, but you're depositing this money. I put <clears throat> transaction deposit B. Wensinger. Yes. And then under the deposit column I put $200, and mm -hmm. then you add it. And then you add it in. Right, so you can do it that way. You can put deposit and say who it's from. You can just simply write deposit. You can write just who it's from. You don't even have to say deposit. But however, you're keeping track of that money going back into your account. How much is the deposit? 200. Okay. What's it for? It was for a reimbursement for this class. <laughs> All right, so then the next thing, once we have all that done, what, how much did you have in your account now? Mine's wrong. Yours is wrong? Yeah, because I put 160 and so 163. Oh, okay. 84 and I put 160. But did you reflect 160 on your check register? Yeah. Because as long as you did that, yeah. technically you still did it the right way. So yeah. It's reflected that way. Yeah, it is reflected that way. Um, I got 3358 Good. Alright, so next we're going to go ahead and get on computers, give you guys a break from writing, and we're going to look up the three different ways to endorse a check. Yeah, you can Google it. Just different, you're going to look up the ways to endorse do check endorsements.
You found five? Okay, well, we're only talking about three. So it's great that you I found So I'm wrong? No, you're not. Basic, oh. restrictive, and special. Basic? Is that what you said? Blank. Blank. Yeah. Restrictive and special. Did everyone find all of those? Yes. Yes? DJ, you didn't find them? Oh, she's still locking on to the internet. <laughs> Wait a minute, what were the three ways? Say that again. The blank Blaine. endorsement, restrictive endorsement, and special endorsement. Oh. Which other thought, ways did you find? Well, yeah, this, I think, uses different terminology. Oh, okay. Um, just a, they call it a standard endorsement. Yeah. Um, for deposit only. Okay. And then, That's uh, restrictive. That would be restrictive, mm -hmm. and then uh, endorsing a check for transfer. That would, that would be, be yep. and that's special. Yep. Okay. So, like you just saw from Steve, there's different <clears throat> ways to call each of them. So the idea is just that there's like a blank, a standard, basic, as Brianna called. Same thing. Yeah, it's all the same thing. And four and five are business checks, is it? Yes, out? we are only talking about personal checks, so that's why. Yes. So then, what is a blank endorsement? It's when you just sign, it's just your name, you sign on the back, I don't know if any of you still get checks, but I do, because my company is really outdated. So I just have to sign the back of my checks and they'll cash it for me, or deposit, doesn't matter. Right, so a blank endorsement standard basic is just when the check is being written to you and you're just signing the back of it because you're just putting it in your account. What would be a restrictive endorsement? Carla. <coughs> deposit only, you have to sign it still. Yes. And sometimes you can put down the account number that you can, I know it says you have to sign it, you can just simply write deposit only or for deposit only and it'll still do the same thing. It's, it's better if you sign it because then it shows that you're the person doing it, but regardless if it says for deposit only and someone takes your check, they can't cash it because it, it says, says for, for deposit only. So it might not go into your account because you didn't personally put your signature on it, and if they don't try to deposit it into your account. <laughs> you have to find somebody that has your name though, right? Like, because the checks written to a specific person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Which is why it's good to sign your name on the back of it as well, because then the names match. Mm -hmm. And then what's a special endorsement? Yes. It's like when you're forwarding the check to somebody else, so you put pay to the order of, and then somebody else's name and sign it. But right. It depends. I've I have done it with my sister because we share the same last name. But so, what, like, does the bank accept um, it? The bank. It. De it used to be called third party checks. Yeah. 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 It, it was, and it's hard to get them to honor it. If you're depositing, it it's it for deposit. If you're only depositing it, you're more likely to have the bank honor it. Because you've both signed it, they, that's why that's where their signature on the back is important. Because it says the name it was paid to them, and they're saying pay to the order of this person, and then you're signing it, saying that you're taking it. So you're more likely to be able to do it if it's a deposited transaction. Cashing it would be very difficult, especially if it's a higher amount, because the banks are skeptical to give that much money and not. Because they have no paper trail then, and they have no way of redo, reversing that transaction. You would put the account number for the person that you're transferring it over to, though, right? So, like, if you're transferring it over to, let's say I'm writing, someone wrote me a check, and I'm transferring it over to Brianna, I'd have to put Brianna's account number on there. No, no, that would. That's for yeah. That's where we were getting next when we go through. You could do that for deposit only to the account.